Hi, it's Juliet Loves Beginning, and today I have a talk called The Fantasy of Suffering. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Here we are talking about suffering. Um, but this is what came to me, and it, it was very helpful. It's time. It's time for me to look at suffering as a fantasy. Not to apply that to anyone else or insist to anyone else, hey, your suffering is fantasy. No. It's just for me to apply right here to to go in deeper and that actually helps me go in deeper to compassion and stillness and calm if it seems I'm with someone else who's suffering to be able to actually be present and be there. Okay, so the first idea was just that all suffering is fantasy. I think now um, there's enough presence of mind here when I catch myself in suffering thinking to be able to remember this is actually not real and there is something real here and the real delivers us from the unreal so acknowledging no matter how real it seems that suffering is fantasy helps me remember this isn't real, no matter how real it seems, this isn't real, and I can relax into the heart of that which is actual, that which is real, and that will assist me now. Um, I was given a visual the other day of, in that relaxing into, going simultaneously into the heart of everything everything perceived, every being, every separate object perceived as separate, and going in, in, in as far as you can until there's no more in to go into. And there, there's just, there's just light there. Then that's where I stop, and that's where I rest. And that's what I allow to take over. So any perception I would hold in front of that light whatever I think that other being is that's not light. All I have to do is go in until I can't go in anymore past the fantasy. And as I was receiving this, it was like I was told what you're seeing and reacting to, which brings on suffering, the reaction is the suffering, um, is the spray paint of fear. So it's like Fear has spray painted a surface. It's entirely unreal. You react to that surface as if it's real and that's suffering. Then if you have the willingness to go in past that spray paint of fear, because that's all it is, and go in until you can't go in anymore, then you can see that all perceived as separate objects are the same thing. If you're looking at a bomb or a birthday cake, it's the same thing. And you can go very calmly into the into the perceived as separate object until you can't go in anymore and you're always sitting in the same puddle of light no matter what being you look at you go in you always have consent to go in in personhood we think we need consent right to to um to go in, to approach a person, to touch a person. In personhood, we think we need consent. In our being, which is shared, no consent is required. You are free to, just like you're free to think of anybody. No one tells you, well, you can't think of a person. You can't <laughs> think of a place. You can't think. No, just as you're free to think, you're free to go in to the beingness of anything perceived as separate, whether it's person or object, until you get to that puddle of light that is you. It's just you. It's just you everywhere. So if you go past the fantasy of suffering into the light, that that's where I can sit and that's what I can intentionally allow to take over. That's what I can allow to inspire. All the speech, all the action, all the thinking, because the thinking causes the action and the speech, so really it inspires the thinking, which causes the action and the speech. Okay, so all suffering is fantasy. But again, I don't have to apply that to anybody else. Unless I'm having a problem with my opinions. 
of someone else. <laughs> so I'm not here to convince an outer world, you know, of ones who seem other than I am. Hey, everybody, your suffering is a fantasy. Nope. I'm just here to get the message <laughs> and to allow it to penetrate and to remember. And I do and feel, feel inspired to share it in this way. But I think it's more to keep me in that state of mind and in that communion when we're in as far as we can go. <laughs> we can't go any further in than that. We're together in this, in this place, in the light. That's communion. That's not me talking to another person and influencing them. That's communion. And when we willingly go to that spot and just radiate and bask there we are sharing that is the most powerful sharing okay so what else i was also told you are much more able to be truly helpful if you allow yourself to be conducted from a freaked out place <laughs> into a calm and peaceful place that's obvious so when i can feel that i'm hovering around this spray paint of fear on the outer Let's say I'm, I'm looking at a world conflict, right? I'm looking at the Ukraine. Um, I could judge any aspect of it. I could come up with a human opinion, judgment, and analysis. But I'm learning it's all meaningless. So I'm learning what I'd rather do is remind myself, okay, I am looking at the spray paint of fear. My analysis is not needed my judgment is not needed, my opinion is not needed, what can I do? Well, anything I'm perceiving is separate, let's go in, because I have permission, <laughs> because beingness is shared, okay, it's not the personhood, it's the being. I, it took me years to get over this idea, like I shouldn't go in, I shouldn't intrude, <laughs> now I can see, it's just our shared beingness. So past the spray paint of fear, whatever I'm looking at, go in, 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 past the perceived past for that one, past any characteristics I believe it has, in till I can't go in anymore. Maybe it's a condition I'm looking at, a condition that I think is mine, a condition that I think is someone else's. Go in till I can't go in anymore and sit there and rest there. And allow that to be the inspiration for all the thinking. And the thinking causes any speech or action. And to trust that any speech or action that comes from that place is appropriate for whatever I'm walking through and is truly helpful. The truly helpful thinking and therefore speech and action comes from this shared puddle of light, this shared light that we're all in all the time, except by choice, we believe we're experiencing something else. But we know better. We know better now. Okay. Then there's a recognition. I was told you worked very hard to make something unreal appear real to you. And if I have the presence of mind when I'm in the middle of feeling some distress, I'm looking at another body, making it, maybe I'm making a comparison between another body perceived as another body and the body I perceive as mine. I worked very hard to make this seem real. I accepted a lot of thoughts from ego to make this seem more real than what is actual. What is actual is boring to the ego because it's just light and it's shared. And it's our shared innocence. <laughs> it's very powerful. The illusion is fueled by the power of the only thing that is actual. This light, this love. It, it has no other power to draw upon. We just distort it. And like I said, the spray paint of fear, that's what we're looking at. So if I remember, when I think I'm looking at something distressing, let's go back to that idea of I made a comparison between one perceived body and this body perceived as me and made a comparison and made a judgment that doesn't feel good. Well, I could remember the stacks upon stacks upon stacks of thought I accepted from ego. I worked hard to make this seem real, but we know 
in quotes, where the real is. We're remembering. So if I go past that spray paint of fear, past that judgment, and go in as far as I can go in, until I can't go in any further, there's no difference. There's no difference between the two objects perceived originally, these bodies and the judgments about them. There's no difference. It's the same beingness. And from that basis, I can trust that thinking will come that will cause appropriate and helpful speech and action. In other words, a personality does not have to be deciding and planning and running it. There's like this very deep inner fountain that supplies thought if thought is needed and the thought causes anything that unfolds that seems to unfold in the physical, the perception of that. So that's what I can trust. Then the other statement I was given is that you are completely safe in allowing the unreal to pass away. And one thing I understood is I don't know anything about anything when it comes to the unreal. I, I can pretend I do, and I can gain a false sense of safety from pretending I know something about the aspects of the unreal that I see fears, spray paint, all these perceived as separate objects and all the bodies are objects that I perceive and, and parts of bodies are objects that I perceive and things in my mind's eye are separate objects that I perceive too. And I can gain a sense of safety from thinking I know things about all the separate things, but there's a deeper safety and that deepest safety is our shared power. It's the goodness without opposite that's within everyone and everything. That is so reassuring. No matter what I'm looking at, if I go in, we'll use the example of the bomb again. If I go in until I can't go in any further into that perceived as separate object beyond the spray for pain of fear on the surface, if I go in then I get to a place where there's nothing but safety, utter safety. And that's what everything is. If I look at a knife and I go in till I can't go in any further, that's what I find, utter safety. But there's a whole lot of chatter on the surface that still seems to sway my experience back and forth and take me out of that steadiness. But I have to recognize that it's by choice. When I'm being swayed back and forth on the surface and feeling unsafe and feeling not calm and feeling less than or more than, feeling the disquiet and imbalance of that, it's because I chose it. It's because I'm choosing thoughts from ego and I'm believing them. So we're in control of that. <laughs> we can observe the source that our thoughts come from because we know how the thoughts feel. And any thought with disquiet attached to it is coming from ego and I accepted it. So I can take responsibility for that because it's so simple. No matter what the effect is, no matter what I'm thinking of, it's always the same thing. So it's simple to take responsibility and see, I accepted that thought is true, but there's a deeper truth and I can rest in that deeper truth now. And I can allow that actual truth, this undifferentiated light to be the determiner of everything I perceive and experience now. And I can recognize it as you. Whenever I'd want to cast you in another role, I can recognize you as you truly are, as that deepest safety and stability. So we allow the fear spray paint to pass away and we allow a reflection 
of what truly is to come into being all around us because we allowed it we all have this power of allowing okay so the last part my attention was directed to in this this fantasy of suffering that I'm experiencing because I wanted to um, in any situation in which you feel the least bit of tension your job is to focus on your own belief always the cause of tension and the maker of your world and to reach out for assistance and relaxing out of it so when I'm looking at the world I need to remember I'm looking at my beliefs what I see is what I believe and if I feel any tension there is a belief present I have taken a thought from ego and I've believed it and now I'm experiencing it and pretending that it's real and it feels very real to me so when I feel this tension I, it's important to find the belief what am I believing just to notice it just to look that's the cause of the tension that's the maker of the unreal world that I'm seeing and reacting to from there I can reach out for assistance my job is to relax out of the belief and that assistance takes me into the heart of what we are reminds me it reminds me that the ultimate source of everything what is truly within everything is pure is safe is kind is beautiful so I can remember that I can sit there I can rest there and I can remember that this ultimate shared kindness innocence purity that can supply my thoughts so if I'm receiving thought after thought after thought of reaction from ego reacting to the spray painted surface of fear it's useless I can see the uselessness of that how it's a waste of time and instead go in till I can't go in any further into what I perceive as myself into what I perceive as the world into what I perceive as any separate thing perceived it's always always leads home always leads to the same place and I can do that I can go in till I can't go in anymore and rest and remember okay this is it <laughs> this is what can supply all the thoughts if thought is needed this can be the supplier of thought and those thoughts cause truly helpful action and speech All right, that's what I have for today. Wishing you well, hoping you're doing well. If you have any questions, comments, please share. I'm happy to, happy to look at something with you, whatever it is. And happy healing. <laughs>